Hello young doctors, welcome to Medico Malu. Today we will be discussing a, about a very important topic of valvular heart disease that is the mitral regurgitation. So let us start with basic anatomy. As you know, the mitral valve is situated on the left side of the heart which is a bicuspid valve supported by papillary muscles, caudate tendine and the mitral valve annulus. These three are very important in the pathogenesis of this condition. So what exactly is mitral regurgitation? That is, it is a pathology during the systole. It's during systole, the blood from the left ventricle is being ejected into the left atria resulting in some complications. This topic will be dealt under a few headings in which two are very important. The first one being the pathophysiology, second being the on examination finding or simply the signs and examination findings. So let us get started. First of all the cause the etiology of the mitral regurgitation can be classified as primary and secondary. Primary is when there is any abnormalities occurring in the valve cus, caudate tendine or the papillary muscle. Primary cause of mitral regurgitation in India is rheumatic, rheumatic heart disease. Also mitral valve prolapse can predispose to mitral regurgitation. Also myocardial infarction which can damage the papillary muscle resulting in primary MR. In secondary cause which affects the mitral valve annulus causing its dilatation or the left ventricular dilatation. Most common being hypertension, myocardial ischemia which damage the left ventricle, also dilated cardiomyopathies. The very important thing you have to remember is causes of acute MR, first one being infective endocarditis, second trauma which can rupture the caudate tendine or the papillary muscles. Then about the pathophysiology, here our mitral valve is not closing. So what happens is blood from the left ventricle is being pumped into the left atria. So, in each beat, more and more blood will be coming into the left ventricle which causes left ventricular overload, left ventricular pressure rising and left ventricular dilatation. As a result of regurgitation, left atrial pressure also increases, left atrial dilatation and hypertrophy can be seen. What happens then? As a result of increased left atrial pressure, the blood from the lungs cannot be sufficiently pumped into the left atria. As a result of this, pulmonary congestion, pulmonary edema, pleural effusion and finally pulmonary hypertension can occur. So our right ventricle has to work hard because of this pulmonary hypertension. As a result of that, the right ventricle will get hypertrophied and this hypertrophied right ventricle exert pressure on the right atria resulting in elevated JVP, back pressure to the inferior vena cava resulting in portal hypertension and thus ascites, impaired drainage of the lower limb resulting in pedal edema. Also, decreased cardiac output because of regurgitation resulting in fatigue. This is the basic pathology. So, the patient may be presenting with symptoms like palpitation. Why? Because dilated left atria can predispose to atrial fibrillation which can cause embolism. This atrial fibrillation results in palpitation also the embolism can be present as various complications that we can be dealing. Second symptom being the dyspnea which is usually on exertion. Then third being the ascites, lower limb edema and the fatigue. These are all the symptoms of mitral regurgitation, breathlessness, palpitation, ascites, edema 
and fatigue also you can see because of left ventricular rapid filling and overload you can hear an S3 gallop rhythm also as a complication of pulmonary edema crepitation can be heard because of pulmonary hypertension parasternal heave can be elicited I had told you atrial fibrillation predisposed to embolism which can be presented as stroke, transient ischemic attack, pulmonary embolism. So you should be clear of that. Very important thing is on examination findings. First, in history you have to specifically ask for recurrent sore throat with polyarthritis which is indicating to rheumatic origin of the disease also socioeconomic status of the patient as low socioeconomic status is a risk factor for rheumatic heart disease treatment history of injection penicillin is important so on general examination first the pulse it will be hyperdynamic because of overloaded left ventricle ejecting the blood if there is associated atrial fibrillation you can elicit an irregularly irregular pulse on BP examination we can see a wide pulse pressure why because our left ventricle is overloaded during the first phase of systole more and more blood will be ejected resulting in elevated systolic blood pressure but because of the regurgitation component the diastolic blood pressure falls and this difference will be marked resulting in wide pulse pressure there will be JVP as I have explained also edema and ascites so going into the systemic examination of cardiovascular system on inspection you can get down and out apex because of dilation of the left ventricle you have to confirm this finding in the palpation apex has to be confirmed it may be on the sixth intercostal space maybe lateral to the mid clavicular line in the auscultation one thing you have to note that our valve is not closing so the s1v here will be soft as s1 is the closure of tricuspid and mitral valve. The typical murmur in mitral regurgitation is pan systolic murmur or hollow systolic murmur with radiation into the axilla which can be heard at the apex. This is the pan systolic murmur which extends throughout the systole. Also there can be mid diastolic murmur because of overloaded left atria pumping blood into the left ventricle but the typical finding is pan-systolic murmur which radiation into the axilla as I had told there will be S3 gallop rhythm because of rapid flow into the left ventricle features of pulmonary edema such as fine bilateral basal crepitations parasternal heave because of pulmonary hypertension and right ventricular hypertrophy on investigation obviously first thing being ECG we can elicit left atrial hypertrophy which presents as P mitral that is showing the enlarged left atria showing P mitral pattern also features of atrial fibrillation can be elicited second being the chest x-ray which reveals enlarged left ventricle and left atria presenting as increased cardiothoracic ratio more than 0.5 also findings of pulmonary congestions like prominent pulmonary vasculature markings features of pulmonary edema like opacifications in echo you can confirm all these findings also we have to look for any valvular abnormalities Doppler studies for the quantification of the mitral regurgitation. We can do a cardiac catheterization at the time of surgery 
for looking for pulmonary hypertension or left atrial pressure. Finally, the treatment. It may be medical and surgical, but reminding you that surgical treatment is the treatment of choice of severe symptomatic mitral regurgitation. But medical treatment includes prophylaxis for one, infective endocarditis and rheumatic heart disease. As the pressure between the valve is high, valve get injured, so the chance of infective endocarditis is more. So we have to prevent that, giving secondary antibiotic prophylaxis. If there is any chance of pulmonary edema, we have to give diuretics. For the prevention of embolism, we have to give anticoagulants and reducing the heart rate, we have to give digoxin as a prophylaxis for atrial fibrillation. As you know, secondary MR, hypertension. If the patient is hypertensive, we have to control by reducing the afterload with ARBS, AC inhibitors and vasodilators. That being the medical management, also we have to advise the patient for salt restriction, avoiding strenuous exercises. But the treatment of choice being surgery, that is mitral valve repair, not replacement, it is mitral valve repair. But if there is an associated mitral stenosis, we have to do replacement. It can be a bioprosthetic valve or mechanical valve. Each one has its own merits and demerits. Bioprosthetic valve may not require anticoagulation, but mechanical valves do require lifelong anticoagulants, but mechanical valves last much longer. If the patient is having coronary artery disease, we have to give coronary artery bypass grafting with internal mammary artery as the graft. It is an important MCQ reminding you that. And if there is any dilatation of the annulus, we have to do annuloplasty. So friends, that's about our topic, mitral regurgitation. I thank you for hearing the class. Please give your suggestions. If you have any doubt, please feel free to ask. I will give you my WhatsApp number in the description below. Thank you.